Okay, so today, uh, really, I'm going to go over just a couple things that we found out in Moodle and some of the differences, because uh, we didn't have any time set up before school in the first two days, and frankly, I didn't know some of the things that we found in those days either. So, um, it's not going to take an hour, although we'll have the whole hour block set aside, so if you have questions, answers, anything about your particular course afterwards, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, first question that a number of people ask, is there a way to collapse down um, like we used to have where you go to one um, section at a time? And the answer is yes and no. No, it's not like before, because uh, before you just click on chapter two and it would collapse down to chapter two. It doesn't do it like that anymore. Now you have to set it to do like my course is set up right now, where it only shows the headers of each one of the sections, and then when you click on that section, then it only shows that section. Okay, And that's in the uh, course settings. That is the new way Moodle is intended to look. So you don't see the whole course at one time, and what you do there is you hit edit settings, and then down here under appearance I'm sorry under uh, course format I take it back under course format under the layout it says show one section per page okay so it doesn't collapse like it used to but if you set your Moodle course to show one section per page then when the kids come into your class it just shows the headers like <coughs> it does now of each one of the sections and they click on that section and then all they see is that one section of the course. And if you see, it also has a uh, next kind of arrow, so I can go back to the previous one and navigate through the sections like this as well. So that's one of the first differences visually that looks very different. Uh, by the way, when you turn editing on, um, you see them all. Uh, and that's because, well, if I go back here, if I have editing turned on and I'm on my course, I see, I see it kind of like it used to be. And that's so you could drag stuff between sections. Otherwise, there'd be no way to move someone from one section to another. Um, but it, as long as that is off, then I only see the, the headers. So that's the first visual difference in, in the course. Uh, then the grade book, there's obviously some differences. Let me recalibrate Jimmy's screen here. One of the differences in the grade book is it's not, as everyone has found out by now, when we go to the category view, it's not as easy to hide and unhide things. You have to go to the drop down and you have to pick hide there. Okay? As many of you have also found out, just because it's grayed out doesn't mean it's hidden. So don't trust the fact before if it was grayed out you knew without question that item was hidden. You don't know that now. Okay? Because there's two different hidden flags. One of them grays it out, and one of them hides it, and one may not or may be true. Okay, so if you if it's showing up over here in your user report, if it's showing up over here in the user report, then it's not hidden, right? And this is how I check. Okay, whenever I want to look, I look right here, and you can see I hid the the second quarter just for the demonstration today. But if I've got anything other than what I want. Like right now, you can see my second quarter hanging out down there. Then I need to make sure I hide that. Okay, and the hiding, which most of you know at this point, is just I go down to that, the top of that, and I hit the edit button, and then I say hide, and I'll hide everything within that container. Which brings us to the first gotcha that we learned last Friday in Deb's class, and. That was, there are some things that when we hide, even though they're hidden, Deb had a test, completely hidden, but it still counted it somehow. So a lot of you have a category, which I would re highly recommend, <coughs> called hidden. And I've got one down here someplace. There we go. I have one called hidden items. Okay, And I put stuff in there so I can go down here and hit hide and know that everything inside there is hidden at one time. It just makes it easier to make sure those things are hidden. But that didn't even solve the problem for Deb. Okay? 
So if you've got a category called hidden items, I highly recommend weighing it to zero because that's what solved your problem. So if I go down here to those hidden items, if you haven't done this before, you can edit the settings and then I'm going to hit expand all. And then that maximum grade, if you set it to zero, then no matter what happens, whether it's hidden or not hidden, if the grade for the category is zero, it won't ever count anything inside there ever. So it's kind of a safety. So I, I put everything that I want hidden inside hidden items and the thing zero. So even if it's unhidden, it's not going to count because the category is zero. Does that make sense? It's kind of forces it to well, not count. If you have yes. like quarter two, if quarter two is hidden, you're saying we need to have another category. That's I put hidden. everything inside of hidden, including quarter two and quarter three. Uh, okay. And that way it's easy. One place I can just hit hide hides everything inside it. And like I'm saying, I make that <coughs> worth zero. So not only is it hidden, it's worth zero. I've made sure that it can't accidentally count. And that was easy to see because, you know, the first quarter is worth 100 points and all of a sudden they had half of the points because it wasn't in quarter zero. So it was also worth that many points and it was cutting really messed up her grade. And it wasn't for her fault some reason that test, and it only seems to happen with tests. And if you haven't noticed, you can't hide tests on in this page either. You can only hide tests out on the other on the other page. So quizzes is the same. Quizzes and yeah, the test module, the quiz module. Um, I'm just not sure why, but I'll I will figure it out. I, I think it was that WAM 1.9 that I had coded. I just have to find it coded. I forgot that. There's a lot of things I customized in 1.9 that I kind of should have kept a note of everything I did so that I would remember them all. Um, so those are kind of a couple a couple things on the gradebook. And before I guess I move on on the gradebook, does anybody have any questions on the gradebook or any gotchas that they have they want to make sure everybody else knows about? Because that's kind of the point of this. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Feedback. As far as I know, feedback still doesn't work, so don't worry. It works just fine. Is it? It just doesn't show up on the user report. Correct. It shows up on every single individual item, so if they go to the individual grade, they see it. Oh, they do. Yeah. But they just can't see it, and that grade. was something I coded. So okay. uh, what, what she's speaking about uh, in particular is that on the user report, there used to be a column here that said feedback where they could see the feedback. And I just didn't have time to code that. It will eventually be there okay. when I have time to do that. Um, but right now, it doesn't have a feedback column like it used to. But on the, on the individual item, when they go to the grade, they see their then feedback. They see yeah, they still okay. see their feedback there. Oh, and I guess that brings us to that other one that I emailed about, um, that if you haven't tried the single view for grades, I highly recommend you use that to put in your grades. It allows you to pick, um, did I go there? Definitely am not there right now. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Oh, yeah, you're right, because that's the only thing I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing here. It says connecting. Somebody is doing something on Moodle right now. It's makes it easier to add grade one assignment. It also gives you next buttons so you can go through and next through the homework or next through the grade book and just enter those grades for that one. Um, it doesn't by default let you enter them here. Um, in order to enter the grades here because they're grayed out, I have to say that I want to override and as soon as I override you see I can enter the grades here. Uh, and then if I click none it will go back to whatever grades came from like in the case of a test or something. And it also is a nice place if you're trying to exclude items that you can go and say, hey, that's excluded for those two kids or whatever. Okay, so it makes it much easier to add grades. I can still do one, one uh, group at a time. So if I want to only do one class, I can just go through the one class and then add, put in those students' grades for that one item. But that is, a, I, I think, a way better way of entering grades. Yeah. Is there anyone else still having trouble with their grades changing after they've saved them? Because I 
I had three last week that went from like everybody had ten points and they all went to point nine. I had one where everybody had five points and they all changed to two point five, and then I have one that went empty. And did, did you enter them on this page? Yes, I do the single. And you hit the save button I when you were done. Hit, I hit save twice. Uh, you're gonna have to show me because you're the only person that uh, I've did heard. Did you Deb's yeah, was something different. Her oh, grades didn't and change. I don't have any her tests. weight changed. Yeah. They, they actually the grade stayed there, but the weight changed over here, which effectively changed the percentage. I think one of mine the weight changed, <coughs> um, but the other two, like the grades, went to things I would never input. Yeah, you have to yeah. let me know so I can look at it when it happens, okay. and, I'll, and I'll take a look at it and see. But that, no, I haven't had anybody tell me that. I did figure out how to import, like, even from my classes, like my old classes from last year, which are totally coded different. There's a lot of steps, but it would save me a lot of time on, like, question banks, remaking of all quizzes and stuff. But those should already be here. Hmm? Well, your but, question? Um, I, well, I have all new classes. Oh, you have all new, new right, classes. That's, yeah, the, and yeah you like, can import from another class. Yeah, I, let me import from yeah. old classes. She had, she had to be build all brand new classes for her. Right. So everybody else should have all their other stuff in the grade. Okay, so next time that happens, let me know so we can look at it. Does anybody else have any grade book related questions? Is there a reason all my, you know, I'll put due dates on my calendar page and then it shows up as items and down at the bottom of the grade book, all those items show up, even though I don't grade them in projects and whatnot. Say that again, I don't understand. Well, so on, on my regular page, say R1, I'll put, you know, sketchbook due this week and all those items show up again, not only like in quarter one, but down at the bottom, everything that's on my um, class page, I guess. Oh, when you're editing? That. When you're editing, you mean? But any time I open the grade book, I got this whole list at the bottom. That it's means they aren't in your category. They aren't in the category. They're, just, they, they're not showing up twice. They can't sometimes, show up twice. Sometimes they are. They, I'll look, but I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, well, you have to show me, because okay. that, that actually, I'm going to say it can't happen. It's not in the category. You may have two assignments that have very similar names, so it looks like it's there twice. Or is it possible you've copied it? Because one of the things you can do now is you can copy assignments really easily. You have to show me because it, it no, that should never happen. That it shows up two places on the on the on the cap. In the, you're talking about here in the setup under the categories and items. You're saying it shows up two different places. Yeah, that shouldn't ever happen. So if it is, we need to figure out what's wrong. Um, and, and just come and let me know, or, or you can email me and I'll go and look at it, or call me during your plan and I can pull, it, pull up your screen so we can look at, look at it together. Um, because if there are things like that that are errors, we have to fix them right away. That's not, I mean, to me, that's not a minor thing, that's a major thing if it's actually showing it twice, because that means there's something wrong with the code completely. Because, uh, you know, it, it only should be in one category at any one time. Um, To say something else. Oh, the, the other thing is, which everyone I'm sure found found by now, is the reports. They're at a different place, and and uh, you still have access basically to the exact same reports that you had before. Uh, if you're in a class, all these are based on the class list that you're in. So if you hit the no grades list, that's saying, are any kids in my classes do they have no grades? And you should see nothing there. I mean, obviously it would be best if that was empty whenever you hit it, but it's just not. Just so you know, it's just not my class, it's my kids in any class when I hit this. So before I go and do the interims, I could hit that, and I know that, you know, if it had Jody here, I'd know Jody didn't have a grade end to, for something, and, and I could ask him before I print the interims out if I wanted to or something. Um, but that's what those are for. Same thing with your D and F report, that's just your students in this class that have D's and F in any class, okay? So I could see, right here if any of my kids have a D or an F in any other class to see if there's a problem and that's why that's there so that I can identify if I've got a kid having a problem is that kid also having a problem in other classes that we need to kind of maybe figure out what's going on is there a family item or something like that that's, that's an issue okay so that's one of, that's really the grade book does anybody got anything else for the grade book yeah Mike on the grade book on the overview report the one that should so show all students Classes. Yes. My, I, I'm just getting for my students only my class. Yes, and I, 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 I'm slowly adding people. Todd and Diane, see everybody? 
because I got to the A's and I haven't made it through every. I got the A's and I got the IEP teachers. Uh, and I got the principals, but I haven't added everybody because I have to go through and add them all. But basically, what he's saying is if he goes and picks uh, one of his students, he should see all the classes that he's a CBI student. That's why he's only at this. So he should see all the classes he's in and their grades. In order to do that, I had to make a special category that said see all grades, and then I have to add the teachers into the category. So I fixed it, I, and I started adding, I added the IEP teachers and the principal first, and then I got through the A's. And I got distracted, and so that's why you're at E. So I'll hopefully you have time today to get everybody else out of it. Because you should be able to see all your kids' grades. It's just like, the only difference between this and this and the interim report is the fact that I can click on it now. And if I said, okay, you're in my interim, you've got my intervention, and you say you've got no homework, what, you know, and if English 12 was an F, you could click on English 12 and then see what his grades are in English 12 and see if there's something that he needs to turn in or something. <coughs> so, so that's why Tom Diane show up as a user in my class. <coughs> I need to, I need to, and that's the next thing I have to code so that, so that they don't show up. Because basically by adding that group, then they add their, they show up as a view hidden grade user. Um, they're not a student, so they can't submit assignments, and they're not a teacher, so they can't ed edit things, but in order to see your grades, I had to do that, yeah. And that'll be the next thing, I have to make it so it skips users on that report just to clean your thing up. I do one thing, and it creates work over here or someplace else. Anything else? Yeah, talk. Um, this is just another question. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know. No, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to go, like, on the old Moodle, when we first logged on, like, I saw my classes, what I taught. And now I see every class in the National Trail. And, so you know, you don't see every class. You see every high school through. class because of that view hidden thing oh. that I did. That's why you and Diane both see that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I need, to, I need to basically take out the my grades thing for teachers. Oh, so that's gonna change. And well, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. But what I wanna do is change it so you see your courses instead of the my grades thing, because the my grades thing automatically shows every class you're enrolled in, and now you're enrolled in every high school course in order to see the grades. So that's what I'm saying. I do one thing and it creates okay. three more things. I didn't know if on the course settings or something. Well, when you go to when you go to your dashboard, yeah. uh, one of the things you don't have the ability to do, which I can turn back on, is the ability to customize this sheet. Um, because whenever I customize it, students do something stupid that breaks it, and then it requires a lot. So I got to figure out if there's a way to make it so just teachers have the ability to customize it, and then you could just delete. You could X out the my grades thing and add my courses up there instead, and it would solve the problem. Um, which I, I just have to see if there's a way for me to turn it on for one person and turn it off for everybody else because I don't want the kids to be able to edit it. They always end up adding some picture that breaks their home page and then so. Okay, so uh, before kind of one of the other things I just wanted to, to, to bring out that we're not going to really t spend too much time in today is the fact that one of the things that Moodle has now that it didn't have before that you may, may or may not have looked at is it has the ability to turn on uh, item completion and item restriction and I'll kind of let you know what that means. So in, in this section, my items over here have little check boxes on them that yours probably don't have, these little boxes on the side. And basically, it allows you to set up things to say, and this really only <laughs> fixed, by the way, teachers that do have a lot on their Moodle page, but you can say, you can't see that until you've done that. You can't do that until you've done that. For instance, on my, I guess, chapter two would be a better one to show. So I have this paper, and after you've submitted that paper, they're going to see this, and after they've done that, they're going to see this. So you make it, it allows you to make it so not everything shows up at one time. And it only, like I said, it really only affects people that have a lot of content on their Moodle page, but the ability to track items and to make things only show up when you've done the prerequisite actually kind of makes it easier if you have a lot of stuff on your Moodle because then it does it automatically. You don't have to say, hey, did you do that? They don't even see the thing. 
that's due. Uh, and then that also then allows you to issue what are called badges. So my kids, when they complete one section, get a new badge. It says, you awarded the badge course introduction. And it has a little badge that shows up over here and a little pop-up, you know, yay. Uh, which you might think is silly, but the kids really like the badges. So as they complete things, they get a badge for that knowledge level being complete. And you can say you have to get a 90% on this test in order to earn that badge or, or whatever. So, and, I, and I, that, that's more than we're going to go over today. I just want you to know that those things are there. Uh, the other thing that, that was added uh, that you have the ability to have is this level up, uh, which is kind of like badges that earn experience points and go up levels and earn levels as they progress through the middle course. Um, the idea that it's part of the whole idea of gamifying your class <coughs> so that kids have to go places and do things to earn rewards. That I wasn't sure. Is that what? That automatic. You have to add the level up block and then uh, you can just leave it set up the way it is. Or you can, I, I learned that their initial setup is not, it's too easy to go up in levels because I really had the kids really, really want to go out in levels and you can set names for the levels. And, like mine are based on Dungeons and Dragons names. So all my hard work kids are monks because they're cloistered in the classroom. And then all the tech kids are rangers. They're going up in ranger ranks because they get to go outside the classroom. Uh, but there's, so there's some new gamey things on Moodle that are there too. That, that uh, depending on how intense your Moodle class is and how much you uh, do blended learning still, how much you flip classes, all those things are available to you too. And if you have any questions on how to do any of those things, we can talk about it afterwards. I just wanted to let everybody know that it's kind of some of the new stuff that's on Moodle. It's just not the way it looks. I know everybody misses the poke the eyeball to hide things. I do too. I don't know why they took those away, but they did. Um, but they added some cool stuff too as far as making it easier to duplicate things and have the same things happen over and over again in your class. If you Anybody have any questions? I really wanted to have time for people to go over like a couple things, but to give you guys time to ask questions if anybody had any questions. And then uh, if you guys want to go, I, I don't mind. Uh, obviously, and anybody who has questions can stay if you want to ask in mass. Okay, it, you got to let me know on those things that aren't working because I can't fix them if I don't know. And if that hasn't happened to me. Yeah, I was gone one day yeah. for the for the, uh, the high schools that work, or I mean, the, not the high school, the Renaissance. Yeah. Yeah, just that one day. Yeah, yeah Tom. Um, on my uh, <clears throat> on my video lessons that I always have where I link to YouTube, uh -huh. when we upgraded to the new Moodle, they're now not hyperlinks. Is there a way I can put those back to a hyperlink? I mean, the kids can copy and paste it into a browser they automatically linked before and they don't, they're not automatically linking now yeah so so like if I want to put one in now um, you have to basically add the link so it's, if it's got the address um, and that I, I don't know if that's something I did that made that hyperlink already work but if you don't know what um, Todd's talking about I'm going to just open up a YouTube video it used to be that you could take this YouTube address into Moodle and um, just add, add a page. You used to be able to just add that address into something and it would just work. Um, nope, I put it in the wrong block. And it used to be that that would just be the YouTube video, and it doesn't do that anymore, okay? So now, if you want it to be the YouTube video there, you basically have to take that, oh, I'm gonna go down here in the right place. You have to take it, and you have to hit the link button, and you have to add the link in there, and now, it'll be the YouTube video. But you have to actually have the link in there as a link. I don't know what why that changed, but it did. So if you just had YouTube addresses, it, now it just shows the address. 
of the video and I say why you're watching this video and not I don't usually just have a video. That's the way I do it. So what if you want to link to a paper that you have on the same? If you wanted to, to link to a, a object, so first of all, it's way easier on Moodle. I can just drag it right there. So if I if I have something on my T drive and I have editing on um, with the new Moodle, I could just well, let me go to my T drive. I could just take and drag it anywhere on the Moodle, just drop it. And it just so the new Moodle, that's one of the one of the additions that I can put. I can drag anything onto there, and, it, and now it names it the same thing, and I can name it differently if I want to. Doesn't hurt anything. So you not go, I mean, I, I know you have the drop in if you create something, so it's you don't even have to do that. It just drop it straight. Drop it straight in. Yeah, you just try anything on, you just drop it straight yeah. there. So cool. that's one of the things with new Moodle that makes it way easier. If you're just trying to give them resources, you can drop anything right there, and it just makes the link and, and uploads it automatically. Then to rename it, just click the. Yeah, you can just click the pencil right there, and you can rename it. So you have to hit enter when you're done. Uh, if you if you click this and then oh, I just have, I said, if I because I've done that several times where I click here to rename it and I put whatever in and then I click off it doesn't name you have to hit the enter key for it to accept the, the name change and you, and that counts on anything you can rename anything on your page just by clicking the the pencil that's all that's for is to. There are there are things that are better about this Moodle that will make things quicker, but there are things we're used to that it's hard to not want them exactly the way that we were before. So, and, and I understand that, which is why we didn't upgrade 12 versions and skipped all the way from 1.9 to 3.1 because I didn't want to upgrade and, and change things on everybody, and I didn't want to spend the whole summer coding to try to make this stuff work either. So. Anything else? Okay, that, that's all I've got unless you guys have any other questions. Thanks.